Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. So today I'm trying three recipes from 1976. Today's recipes come to us from Better Homes and Gardens, Gifts from Your Kitchen. I'll talk more about this book a little bit later. Tis the season for gift giving and I thought what better time to try out a few recipes in this cookbook. We're giving gifts, we're getting gifts, we're trying to come up with things to give to our friends and neighbors. And I thought, why not try a few of the things in this book? Maybe you'll get a few ideas along the way. I'm gonna start with this recipe for minty chocolate malt mix. First, I have to blend some ingredients in the blender. And the first ingredient is chocolate malted milk. So I have a cup of that here that is going into my blender. And then alongside that, I have some butter mints that I've crushed up. It said white peppermint butter mints. I couldn't find a whole package of white ones. So I have white mixed with yellow. I think there were five white ones in the whole thing. I don't think that this will negatively impact the color. We're gonna blend all this anyway. That goes in with the malt mix. Oh, that minty butter mint smell is amazing. I love it. Okay, so now I have to blend this until the mints are all chopped up and everything is kind of mixed together. So I have blended together the first cup of bolted milk powder and those butter mints, and it just said to blend them until the butter mints were chopped into small pieces, which they are. And this smells like Girl Scout Thin Mint cookies and I'm here for it. More ingredients to go here. I have my remaining one cup of chocolate malted milk powder, and then half a cup of sweetened hot chocolate mix, three cups of non-fat dry milk powder. Ooh, there's, there's a lot of um, whooshing in the air here. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Don't inhale too, too heartily when you're making this. Stir well. So I thought a whisk would be good for this. I'm using my favorite twist whisk, just to sort of like make sure that if there are any lumps that they kind of get broken up, I thought a whisk would work very well for this. We used to make hot cocoa mix and tea mixes and things. When I was growing up, I haven't made anything like this in a long time, but yes, we used to make stuff like this to give away as gifts to friends and family and neighbors. And you store this in a fun little jar container and you include the instructions on how to make the drink. And yes, I am going to be making one of these here on camera so that I can taste it and let you know how it is. But instructions for how to make this drink are one quarter cup of the powdered mix to six ounces of boiling water. So I'm gonna measure it out just so I can kind of visually see what that looks like on this mug. Okay, that's like, this is a pretty big mug. I wasn't really sure what it was gonna turn out to be. Ooh, yes, minty. You know, this is, it doesn't have any coffee in it, but this is definitely, without tasting it, giving me some international, <laughs> international coffee vibes. You know, the powder that I used to make coffee in my 1970s video. Here we go. Okay, that is pretty nice actually. Very minty, like super minty. It's more like sweet and minty than it is like overwhelmingly chocolate, but you do get that nice malt flavor in there that I really enjoy. If you make a batch of this, definitely give some to your friends and family as gifts, but save a little bit for yourself too, because it is very tasty. This next one is super interesting and I'm very excited to try it. I'm gonna make this homemade horseradish mustard. Can't say I've ever tried to make mustard before, but let's give it a go, shall we? This recipe starts with bouillon. And this is vegetable bouillon. It says two bouillon cubes, but my cubes are a little bigger. So it only takes one. And I need to dissolve that. I don't wanna do that off camera, that's too hard. <laughs> okay, see it's in there, we're gonna dissolve it. In saucepan blend cornstarch, sugar, mustard, and turmeric. Cornstarch. That is dry mustard. I'm gonna have this whole recipe in the description down below. And then our nice bright yellow turmeric, blend that together. So I'm just gonna like give that a little bit of a whisk before I do anything else. I feel like I'm making a potion. Stir in vinegar and horseradish. Some white wine vinegar. And then this is horseradish. Look at that. <laughs> Slowly blend in bouillon. Absolutely no idea how this is gonna turn out at all. So we're gonna stir that. And I currently have no heat under this, by the way. So that is what it looks like so far. And now I need to put some heat under it. 
cook it over low heat until it's thickened and bubbly. And I will check in with you a little later. Okay. It's happening. It is thickened. It is bubbly. I mean, it looks like egg yolks, which is surprising because the next ingredient is egg yolks. <laughs> what needs to happen now is I need to add a little of that into these and kind of temper it. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this quite on camera very well, just because, you know, I like to have this happen fast. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna temper these egg yolks just like off camera real quick. Okay, yes, that went much better than me trying to like do that like this. <laughs> so now I need to add this back in slowly and then let it cook. If you could see what I look like behind the camera right now, you would laugh at me <laughs> the way I have to stand. <laughs> Look, it's mustard. I'm gonna take this off the heat now that it's cooked and we'll give it a taste in a moment. Look at how yellow this is. So I transferred the warm mustard to a measuring cup because I thought it would be easier to pour into jars. It is still very warm, but I am gonna transfer it to a couple of little half pint jars. We'll even those out, <laughs> we'll even those out a little. So I'm just gonna go ahead and taste it with like a saltine. I don't have any plain pretzels. I thought that would probably be a very good vehicle to try this, but I'm just working with what I've got. So let's just kind of go in the measuring cup a little. I thought it would pack a little bit more of a punch, to be honest. When I think horseradish, I think like very in your face with that sort of horseradishy zest. But this is kind of sweet, actually. Let's try again. And it has like this very savory quality, I think from the vegetable bouillon. It's interesting. It's not quite like any mustard that I've had, but I don't dislike it either. I'm kind of wondering if it is going to taste different when it cools. So I am gonna let these cool down. I'll probably actually store them in the fridge for a couple of days and then I'll come back and give them another taste. So I'm gonna do another mustard taste test. This has been in the fridge over the weekend, so a few days now. I just wanna see if the flavor has changed or, or anything like that, if it's developed over the last couple of days. So I have a saltine cracker, just like what I used for the previous taste test, right when it was still warm. Let's see, texturize. It actually, it feels like almost a little thicker. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I think I need like a little more, hold on. Indeed, I like it much better cold. I think I taste a little bit more of that mustard flavor, that like sharp mustard-y-ness. <laughs> I don't have a good descriptor for it. It tastes more like mustard, still a bit sweeter than I expected, and not quite as much of that horseradish punch as I would have liked. I probably would have added a little bit more than that of the horseradish. But I think it's good. I think it would make a really great dipping sauce for like soft pretzels or something. I don't know, what else do people like mustard on hot dogs? <laughs> I don't know if I would dip chicken nuggets in it. It's not honey mustard. I mean, it is kind of sweet though. I, I suppose you could. You could use this for whatever you wanted <laughs> if you have a mustard fan in your life. Let's get going on this homemade granola mix. Always, always up to try a new granola recipe. So in this bowl, I have placed two and a half cups of old fashioned rolled oats, not the quick cooking type, just rolled oats. And so combining the oats with shredded coconut, I'm using unsweetened here, some coarsely chopped almonds. My almonds were already sliced and it made it a lot easier to chop them than using whole almonds. Sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, and half a cup of wheat germ. I found this in the cereal aisle of my grocery store. I think you could also find it at like natural food stores, possibly in the baking aisle, just kind of like do, do a little sleuthing to find it. And now I'm just gonna give this a stir. This feels very wholesome. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna set that aside. Next, in a separate small bowl, I'm combining a quarter cup of vegetable oil with half of a cup of honey. I did oil this measuring cup a little bit before putting the honey in. You can see that it's coming out pretty easily. Just a little trick. And I'm gonna take it off of that. So now I just need to stir this to combine. I may get a whisk in there. Yeah, that is doing a little bit better. That's much better, see? All combined. Coming back in with my oat mixture. So now this goes in here. 
another stir to combine. Make sure that that coats everything really well. Again, it smells, I can smell the honey and it smells really nice. Whoa, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's a clean countertop. We're just gonna put it right back. <laughs> Sometimes I just get over enthusiastic with my stirs. And now I have a sheet pan. You probably know what's coming next if you've ever made granola. I need to dump this on the sheet pan and spread it out. Okay, so I've reheated my oven to 300 degrees and I need to bake this for, it says 45 to 50 minutes, but I do need to stir it every 15 minutes as it browns. So look at how nice and toasty brown that got. It took me pretty much exactly 50 minutes and I stirred every 15, you know, with the addition of five minutes at the end. I didn't want to go much browner than this. So you can see it's like already starting to cool and get crispy, but the recipe advises that I remove it to another pan to let it cool completely. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay, and once I get it removed, you can even see it's starting to clump. I'm supposed to keep like stirring it so it doesn't do too much clumping. Okay, I turned the camera off while I scraped because I didn't think you would appreciate hearing all that. So it's on a different sheet pan now, and I have to let this cool completely before I add my final ingredients. Okay, my granola is completely cooled, and that means it's time for the final ingredients. Some dried chopped apricots. Apricots, whatever, apricots, apricots, and some raisins. And I just need to stir all of that in to combine. Now I'm following the recipe, you know, I'm adding the dried fruit that they suggest, but I'm guessing you could probably add something like dried cherries, dried cranberries, um, you know, whatever your favorites are. I happen to like both raisins and apricots, so I'm hopefully gonna be pretty happy with this. So there's just a little sample of the dry granola by itself. And I am going to try it dry first, but then I did have a little dish of vanilla yogurt that I want to eat it with too, because that's probably how I would eat it is, you know, combined with this vanilla yogurt. Okay, I'm just going to like pinch some <laughs> and see. Mm, okay, first impressions by itself. Very light on the sweet, but nice and toasty. I got a little bite of dried apricot in there and it was nice. Like it was a nice little punch of sweetness. I don't mind the sweetness level. It's pretty light, like I said, but I do wish I had some cinnamon because I love cinnamon, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pour this like into or on top of my yogurt and we'll try that together. I'm not really one to have granola just as cereal. Usually I like it with yogurt or something. Mmm, I really like that together. You know, because I put it with something that was just slightly sweeter, this isn't like overly sweet vanilla yogurt either. It's the Fairlife vanilla yogurt, very creamy, but like not, I wouldn't say overly sweet, but it kind of balances everything out perfectly. It makes for like a nice toasty flavor, but like a nice textural experience as well. And again, with just those little pops of dried fruit in there, I can taste that honey flavor too, which I really enjoy. Better Homes and Gardens, Gifts from Your Kitchen was published in 1976. And I thought that this would be a great time of year to cover this book. It's the time of year that we are trying to figure out like what gifts to give people, what, what to buy, what to make possibly. And I just thought maybe we can find some ideas in here. I think especially at Thanksgiving and Christmas time, we think about giving food gifts. Maybe we think let's make cookies and candies and things like that. And that is delightful. I am not turning down a cookie or a candy, but I really wanted to try some of the other recipes in this book. That's why I chose like the granola, the mustard and the drink mix. Cause I thought mm, these are just like a little bit different. This book touts 251 recipes for food gifts, ideas to make your gifts personal and tips on wrapping and safe mailing. It really does have a lot of really good information, some ideas on decoration. I also have a few ideas on containers that you can use for these items when you make them. This particular section really stood out to me, Gift Givers Storage Guide. So it has a list of all of the types of items in this book, like all of the, the different types of recipes, and it gives guidance on how to store them, length of time to store them, where to store them, that kind of thing. You know, and it marks them as whether or not they're good 
to send to people in the mail. I don't know if that's as common anymore. I mean, I know postage has gotten quite expensive. I do know there was a time when we were probably sending more food gifts through the mail. The mustard I made, not a good, not a good mailer because you do have to refrigerate that. It's not like fully preserved, but if you put it in the refrigerator, it does last for two months. <laughs> Let me check and see the other things I made as well. The drink mix that I made, it says stores for six months in an airtight container. The granola does not last quite as long. It says if you want to store it for more than two weeks, you do need to put it in a sealed plastic bag and freeze, but that's okay. The book opens with taste tempting gifts from the oven. So this is things like bread and baked goods, lots of coffee cakes, things like that. Doesn't that look so delicious? And I mentioned cookies. I mean, it does, it does give some cookie recipes in here. I do love the way that they packaged this. This like almost little Red Riding Hood thing. There are cakes in here, pies. Oh my gosh, look at these jars. I love these jar lids, these very groovy jar lids. <laughs> Show off garden gifts. I don't have a garden. I'm terrible at growing things, but this is like the section on fruits, vegetables, pickles, that kind of thing. They do have some soup in here. I mean, if you think about it, just about any food can be a gift. <laughs> you know, maybe someone that you know is going through a hard time and you can take them a meal and maybe that would really help them. Jams, jellies, chutneys, relishes. I, I couldn't not point this out. I think this might be my favorite image in the entire book, this like cowboy decorated jar. I should have done that for mine. I'm, I'm not that ambitious, I guess, but it looks great in the book. Lots and lots of different types of fudge recipes in here. Opera fudge, almond fudge, no cook fudge. That's, that's my kind of fudge. Peanut butter bonbons, lots of good candies. But I was most intrigued by sauces, seasonings, and mixes. I just, I like the idea of giving something that maybe will last a long time, you know, they can hold onto. I think, you know, around the holidays, you might get a lot of things all at once, you know? And with some of these seasonings and mixes, they're things that you can use for an extended period of time, or if you don't use them up right away, it's okay. I briefly considered making some of these seasonings as well. Seasoned salt, make your own curry, poultry seasoning. I think that's a really cool, a cool idea. I love a spice blend. There's a pancake mix in here. Gift-worthy beverages. So not only do we have different types of hot cocoa and tea mixes, there's also a section for brandies, liqueurs, like all kinds of different things. And we come to the gift bazaar chapter. How long has it been since you've been to a holiday bazaar? <laughs> lots and lots of cookies for, you know, bars and cookies and things for like a bake sale in here. Banana bread, molasses oat bread. So lots and lots of different breads here too, all appropriate for gift giving. When it comes to containers and and receptacles for your gifts i like to go to the dollar tree because they they do often have some really really pretty jars i chose these like plastic kind of containers with a cute little christmas design on the side for my drink mix i thought these jars were really really pretty so i picked a few of those up for myself and then they even had these ziploc bags that were decorated with christmas dinosaurs i thought that would also be a good way to give the granola. Also, you don't have to go shopping for new things. You know, don't forget about your local thrift store as well. They often have tins and things that you could put cookies and candies in, or even glass jars. Of course, like anything that you buy, you're gonna wash anyway, if you're gonna use it to give a gift to someone. And also don't forget about what you might already have on hand. Do you know how many pimento jars that I have <laughs> just from making recipes on this channel? It's a lot and they are the perfect size for that mustard. So that is what I used. <laughs> you know, you can decorate things in different ways with tissue paper and bows and fabric, you know, whatever strikes your fancy really, just to make it a little bit more festive. Recapping the recipes that I made today. So starting with the drink mix, I think that might be my favorite. I really love like a chocolate mint kind of cocoa beverage. This is very warm and cozy and delicious. It's a nice, it's a nice little treat and it was really easy to put together. And I love the flavor of butter mints and they just kind of melt right into the drink. So it's, it's perfect. The mustard was so unusual. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It tastes good to me. It just tastes different than I expected. Also, I've never made anything quite like it. You do want to be a little bit careful with the mustard and the turmeric because it can stain things. So just word of warning there. It definitely had like a mustard flavor to it, but 
It was kind of sweet and like savory from the vegetable bouillon. I did want a little bit more zestiness. So if I made this again, I think I would probably add a little bit more horseradish to it. Um, I wonder if I added like a little bit of cayenne, like for some spice, that might be really good. I think you can adjust this one according to your taste just a bit. And finally that granola, I think that was like a really good base of like the grains and things and the nuts that were in it were like a really good base to start with. And you could kind of customize a little bit from there. I went ahead and followed the recipe because I do that most of the time. I follow the recipe the first time, but you could change up the different kinds of dried fruits that are in it. I personally would love to add some cinnamon to it maybe some like maple, maple syrup might be good as well. But I think it was a really great start for, for just like any, any kind of granola. It crisped up really nicely too. It, you know, there was some hands-on time. You had to stir it as you were baking it so that it didn't burn. And then the cooling time, of course. So you don't want to, you do want to plan ahead. It's not something that you can, you can make in 10 minutes. You're going to need a couple of hours, but I think it's totally worth it. It was nice and toasty. I hope you liked this video and I hope you got some new ideas for your holiday gift giving. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also join me on Patreon for some additional content. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you'd like to join. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.